Salt River. Bless you and me, river, on down to the sea. Halfway up the Columbia River, above Grand Coulee Dam, these canoes were carved into salmon by students who had never had the opportunity to see them swim past their home. The idea behind these canoes is to bring the salmon, these salmon canoes, these five canoes, five species of salmon, back up to the upper reaches of the river. Our goal is to start the public discussion of the feasibility of the possibility of fish passage at the Grand Coulee Dam. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God. Creator, Kualanshutin. We thank you for the gift of the river and the creation about us in this beautiful part of the world. Please forgive us, the people, for not allowing this fish to go where you intended them to go. As we gather this day to look at the complexity of the watershed. We're sorry, Creator, for not allowing these fish to get up here. As we look to past histories of hurt and injustice. Soften the hearts of the leadership. Soften their hearts and allow them to let these fish by. Amen. When uh, humans were first brought to this earth, the Creator uh, saw us as um, a new species that was starving. The Creator asked for help, and He asked the animal people, how, what, what could um, we do to help these, these human beings that are coming up? Salmon was the first one to stand up to the Creator and uh, give that ultimate sacrifice of His life for us humans. Uh, the people can eat my body. Um, and that will help them uh, feed their families. It will help them give them medicine. And then the Creator made a deal with us as humans and said, if we take care of these first foods that I'm providing you, then they will always take care of you. That was one of the things historically that all the people had a common goal, and that was to ensure that these different species were protected. The tribes have proven the need, and so now it's just important that they continue the fight and they do everything possible within their sovereign powers to bring these salmon back home. It's been wrong for many years, so it's time to bring them back. On a gray day in August, six of us start paddling up the Columbia River. But our journey really began a year ago when students from Kettle Falls first started carving one of these salmon canoes. More canoes followed from Inchileum, Welpinit, and Spokane. Because the students chose to carve these canoes into salmon returning home, we felt it was our duty to give them that story. To honor these salmon, to pay tribute to these salmon who can no longer make it to their ancestral spawning grounds, we decided to uh, you know, start paddling at the ocean. Let's, let's start where the salmon start. Well, at the mouth of the Columbia, it's a little over six miles wide. From the beginning of time, we have never left our Aboriginal land. 
and we have always worked towards protecting these rivers and, and trying to keep them safe, to keep them clean. Well, in this section of the river, it's actually downriver from where the tribes primarily fish. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, primarily a non-tribal fishing area. There'll be sport and commercial fishing activity. What do you like about fishing? Being out in the water. I just like it. <laughs> and my, my uh, son, gillnets now. And my grandson wants to be a gillnetter. She wants to do it. I mean, we're always on the defensive to try to keep our survival. And uh, we just need to work together to get the predators under control, restore the habitat, and just make more fish for everyone. Nayakus and the sportmen, the guide boats, or the trollers, or the gillnetters, or the Indians. We gotta quit fighting with each other and come together as one unity. And by doing that, you have a workforce of many people that can stand up and say, hey, we, need, we got a problem, we're all standing together. We all care about the fish probably more than most, and if we stick together uh, for the benefit of all fisheries, then we're going to be better off. But I'm hopeful that we are having a growing awareness that we can no longer treat the Columbia River system as a mere machine. Paddling up to the face of the Bonneville Dam, I can only imagine what a wild salmon would think. Who in the heck put this concrete wall across the river, and how am I going to get past it? The tugboat coming up the river said we could tie up with them, so we did, and they led us right through the lock. One dam down, 13 to go. <laughs> Columbia River Journal. Uh, where were we? Yesterday, we had not much to say. We uh, we sailed all day, and it was a wet and wild one. <laughs> Got some big water. We took more water than we had all trip. Uh, we had both canoes were taking quite a bit. We hit some really big rollers, and we were hauling butt. Well, the canoes are just doing great tied together. It almost looks like we got this down. Anyway, that's it for now. Canoe, canoe. For me here, a west wind helps me fish this back eddy. I know that my nets are bagging out really good and the water is being pushed through this back eddy a little bit stronger. So I guess that has always been traditionally for the Yakima as a place where we've always fished really hard. You think of that this is a food source that's medicine to people. We should keep the river clean for them and, you know, host them in the best way we can because obviously they're giving us life. The salmon is one of our most important resources that we have. Water is another most important resource that we have because we cannot survive without water, clean water. It really is us that we're saving. We're saving ourselves. Um, when we work to, to um, improve the health of that river, all of the different areas that, that are touched by that river, we're improving ourselves. So it's, it's, a, it's a circle in which when we give to it, it gives back to us just as much. Our vision is, is one where we don't have to worry uh, about toxic pollution when we eat fish or when we take our kids down to play along the side of the river. And when we live by the laws that the Creator gave us and how we walk in this land and how we take care of this land, everything else will become healthier. I feel the weight of the radioactive material that's moving toward the river down by Hanford. And I've imagined myself starting a prayer vigil with people from eventually all over the world who would come and sit on that big high ridge and pray that we not infect the river. And the water quality is pretty good there, other than the nuclear waste, and it's the last best place on the main stem for those salmon to spawn. We learned how to eddy hop, where you're literally paddling one foot off the shore, trying to run along that eddy until you get to the point and you gotta shoot through it and cut back into shore, and work your way up the shore. 
That's basically what the salmon do. You know, they're working up the shore, working up around an eddy till they can shoot past and cut back into a protected water. This is a Cordell. We got the stern rope tied to the front. And then you patrol to the stern by letting out the bow. We are actually cordelling with the deer leading the way up this island. It's like old Bob Marley said, have no fear for atomic energy because none but ourselves can free our minds. You know, I think that the first step is, is to realize what it is that you care about and what it is that you want to work towards. And uh, in many ways, this canoe is a metaphor for that. Jumping in the river or going out and fishing for salmon, I, I don't hesitate to take that opportunity to, um, to take care of the salmon as, as a promise that uh, when we came, uh, uh, that the salmon would take care of us and in return we would take care of the salmon. I guess the resilience in my DNA uh, ties me to this land and right above the dam is a place in, in English is called Whale Island and that's the place of our creation site. So when the dam came in, it flooded it. And this was a huge fishery uh, prior to the inundation, but it's also the place of our creation. The wind and the current were against us, but today we start on Wanapum Lake and the water is quiet and unfocused. These river lakes wait patiently for the quiet cercerations of time and erosion to infiltrate the crevices of their dams and rend them open. I'd never considered that a dam could be a bad thing, but now I know this river. The dams are unnatural and they stymie every natural process here. The river cannot breathe. I've seen every dam on this river. We've traveled past 14 dams. They're big dams. They block the natural flow of the river. They block the animals. They block the people from interacting with different sections of the river. We wouldn't be where we are today without the dams, but we have an opportunity with this Columbia River Treaty to make them better. So this is the end of the line for salmon at Chief Joseph Dam. And are we going to allow that, live with that? I'd like to think that we're better people today and that we would recognize that as an error and say, you know, we need to install passage here. When I catch a salmon and, and prepare or flay it and everything, I take the remains up above the block, up above this dam, and I say a prayer and I have my son starting to say that prayer that, you know, that creator, quell and shooting, please forgive us, the people, for not allowing this fish to go where you intended them to go. There's actually examples downriver where uh, passage is taking place. In the mid 90s, that's where we saw the low point of about 2,500. And at about 2010, 2008 to 2010, we had returns where that would enable harvest for not only for food fishing for the Okanagan, but also a, a recreational fishery and an economic fishery for the Okanagan. The collaboration part is huge. Creating this new process um, and using these sciences but based out of our Chapteek stories and our values um, is something absolutely amazing. Just watching a youth catch his first salmon for the first time and they love like the clubbing part. Um, it's all about like bringing that pride back. The support that we encountered was phenomenal. People fed us, people housed us. We were treated very generously. My favorite stretch of the trip was through Rufus Woods Lake. Four days in a row where we saw nobody but each other. Plus it was the last part of the journey before Grand Coulee Dam. When I think back, you know, there's a famous picture we have of chiefs from our tribe, different tribes standing in front of Grand Coulee. They have their backs to the camera and they're looking at the dam. And I've always wondered, what are they thinking? Oh my God, what just happened? You know, I mean, I don't see a powwow going on or a celebration. 
bring the salmon back, let them pass the dams. We would like them leaping well more than their four to six feet capability. What about leaping 200 feet? Our system utilizes a flexible sleeve that creates a seal around an object. A pressure differential is then introduced, and that pressure differential is the motive force, force which, which pushes or pulls that object forward. The whoosh was, appears to be an opportunity to have a low handling, low stress, effective at high head dams kind of technology for helping fish get upstream. And this is an opportunity with uh, all of the other technologies that are, are available or that folks are working on in other areas. They're getting fish over uh, high head dams. Um, there's a lot of folks saying we can't afford to do it right now. We're saying, you know, we can't afford not to do it. We're sorry, Creator, for not allowing these fish to get up here. Soften the hearts of the leadership. Soften their hearts and allow them to let these fish by because they, they control that power for sure. So when Grand Coulee Dam went in, fish ladders and things like that were kind of an afterthought. So a, a ladder was never put in at Grand Coulee. And so it went on. Uh, the dam was completed. World War II was, was triumphed over uh, Germany and, and Japan based on that power that was generated. And so the Spokane tribe feels that that was part of our contribution. But sadly enough, uh, the fish quit coming to the Spokane tribe. We are the descendants, whether literal or social, of those who conceived the Columbia and Snake River dams, or built them, of those who created the treaty, and almost certainly every one of us has been a beneficiary in some way in the goods those dams have brought, and they have brought goods. Electricity, low power bills, commerce, etc. So we are the ones who must most ask ourselves and our neighbors um, rather insistently about their costs to people and waters and lands. Um, uh, I think of Abraham Lincoln during the Civil War. He didn't really talk, he didn't really address the slaves, the black population. He addressed the white population. And he asked questions like, what have we done? What are our acts doing to ourselves? And to our desired view of ourselves as good people, as moral people, as good neighbors. One River, Ethics Matter. The Columbia River Treaty was signed and ratified in 1961 and 64, came into force in 1964. We have many problems with this treaty from an environmental perspective, the exclusive focus on hydropower production and flood control, the failure to address the environmental and social and economic impacts of reservoirs. Restoring fish passage into historical areas for which they're currently blocked can be a critical element of integrating ecosystem management into a modernized, equitable treaty. The Corps' background and, and expertise is in flood risk management. BPAs is in hydro power generation. Uh, the tribe's background and expertise has been uh, for time and memorials been ecosystem function, take care of Mother Earth and it'll take care of us. So. We have a lot to draw on. We have a lot of values and information and understanding. We take up those challenges. We build alliances with each other, with partners. We've got partnerships that we thought we'd never have in our day, in, in our lifetime, but we're making it happen because our children and our grandchildren, and as many speak of, seven generations ahead depend on that. <laughs> Bringing these canoes back to where they were carved or where they were spawned really reinforced that these canoes are like the salmon. They can make it over Chief Joseph and Grand Coulee Dam. They can return to their ancestral spawning grounds. From time immemorial, and that's kind of cliche, but we were a salmon people. And when other tribes that didn't, uh, didn't have a word or didn't know what the name of our tribe were, they would do a fish motion and go like this to their mouth that we were salmon eaters. 
And so the only way right now that we're getting salmon is in these totes that come from some of the fish hatcheries downstream. That's even better than what we had before. So just like zero access to fishing, zero access to a whole part of our culture that was once, you know, over 70, 80 percent of our diet. Our people lived on salmon. That's what nurtured us through our hard winters. Right across the river here, every year, we have a salmon ceremony. And what it is, is it, it's prayers and songs that's offered up to the salmon. And we clack the rocks together to make sure that the salmon could hear us. And uh, it's, it's trying to call the salmon back, which is kind of ironic because there's a dam down below us here that, that keeps the salmon from coming here. But it don't matter. We're always over there, and we're always trying to call the salmon back. As we began to return these canoes to the schools and places they were spawned or carved, we realized we would soon need another canoe to take us the rest of the way up the river. So in 10 days, we built a new canoe in tribute of David Thompson, who paddled these waters 200 years ago. Thompson made a boat that was very elegant, very much like a basket, like a combination of tribal technology and European technology because he'd been out for so long and he had a, he just was sensitive to that. And he was really good at using the materials at hand to do what he had. So when you built your boat, you had a modern way to do it and it still worked. And I, I love that. I mean, he would have thought it was completely appropriate. I was in, in Chilem and I heard that there were some canoe people that were, uh, that were coming up the river what happened was uh, they, the kids helped make a canoe and it was called the Crying Salmon. I grew up on the waters of the old Columbia Back home on my reservation shores My grandpa caught the salmon up on Kettle Falls Till FDR came in and closed the door and when it got up to uh, in the Castlegar area, I wanted to bring our, our youth and kids up there to uh, have that experience of paddling and enjoying the canoe that they helped make. But I also wanted to make a statement to the Canadian government that, you know, we're not extinct and we're still here. And I think we had the hardest part of the river because there were so many rapids, we had to get out and, and pull the canoe about seven or eight times during this trip. Now the pulp mills and the smelters line your shores up north. About four years ago, I had to go in a field up by what they call Evans, digging units and testing the area. We were all shocked because Everything that would come up was black, black, sparkly, tar-looking, and this is from Tech Cominco. The Tech Smelter is operated for over 100 years. Without them, the trail wouldn't be here. Placed strategically right on the bank of the Columbia River. They've always paid a good wage, um, and any downturns in the economy, is we, we don't feel it here. I got very sick. That fall, I could hardly walk. I could hardly raise my arms. They came to the conclusion that this river should be identified and classified as an industrial river. And does that give them permit to throw whatever they want, us, all of us, whatever we didn't want into the river? I won't swim in the Columbia River anymore. I won't eat nothing from the Columbia River because after seeing the black sludge, I thought, I don't care what they say, I'm not eating anything out of there <laughs> until it's cleaned up. The idea that ecosystems don't play a part anymore is a thing of the past, and now's the time to stop and reflect and say, okay, 
what do we do to fix this? They are liable under U.S. law now. So an eventual cleanup 